also look at those cases in Wisconsin. The state health department reports over 33,000 cases since March. 807 people are dead. Right now, 274 people are hospitalized with the virus since yesterday. Milwaukee County reporting nearly 190 new cases, adding up to over 12,700 infections. One layer of protection from coronavirus is a mask, and that is on the agenda tomorrow in Milwaukee in a special common council meeting. Members will discuss the new MKE CARES masking ordinance that would require masks outdoors if you're within six feet of somebody and when you're inside any building that's open to the public. More than 70 Milwaukee businesses have called for a mask requirement. Tonight's rebound report will help you prepare for some important deadlines this month. Some coronavirus benefits and protections are expiring. For example, if you're getting federal pandemic unemployment compensation, that extra $600 a week will come to a halt July 25th. As far as federal eviction protections for renters in a home covered by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, uh, you couldn't pay your rent. You were protected from being evicted. On July 25th, landlords can start once again sending out eviction notices. Tonight at 10, Kristen Byrne will offer some advice to consumers for when those resources dry up. We also have other resources that can help at tmj4.com rebound. Just click on the link for making ends meet. To stay up to date on coronavirus news in our area and on your time, download the streaming TMJ4 News app. Find it on your connected TV, your Apple TV device, your Amazon Fire, or your Roku. A surge in deadly violence continues on the streets of Milwaukee, leaving two young men dead after separate shootings on the city's north side. The latest shooting in the Silver Spring neighborhood, that happened around 8.30 this morning near 65th and Silver Spring. A 27-year-old man is dead. Police are still looking for the shooter in this incident. Police also investigating a fatal shooting in the Washington Park neighborhood. Now, this happened this morning just before 5 near 39th and Lloyd. A 28-year-old man from Milwaukee is dead. One neighbor passing by the crime scene had this to say. I've been down this road. I've been shot. As the world can see, I've been this close to death. I had to go to God in prayer like this. Being for real, by the grace of God, I, I pray that they bring peace throughout the neighborhood. Milwaukee police are still looking for that shooter. Governor Tony Evers announcing today he wants to move forward on rebuilding I-94 between the zoo and the Marquette Interchange. That proposed construction would rework the freeway from 70th Street to 16th Street. Evers announced today he is seeking federal approval to start work on the project. The Wisconsin DOT will look at alternatives to, provide, to find the preferred option, a final design for improving lanes, improving safety, and preserving the grave sites and other property around the freeway. That's all yet to be determined. Our next story is Positively Milwaukee. Today, several Milwaukee police officers took a break to build a special connection in the community. Officers at the District 3 police station donated several basketball hoops to families in the neighborhoods they serve. Our Ryan Jenkins shows us how these hoops could actually hold hope to reshaping attitudes that some kids have toward officers. Several Milwaukee police officers pooled their money together and right now they're assembling new basketball hoops here in the garage of the District 3 police station. For me, um, growing up, I wasn't always on the right side of things, um, but basketball is what changed my life. This is the second year that police officer Frank Williams is carrying a tradition of donating basketball hoops to kids in the neighborhoods he helps to protect. Someone who grows up in the same neighborhood as you and uh, them seeing you do something positive with um, a badge, using that as a medium. Uh, I think that's really big. After an all hands on deck assembly of the hoops in the garage of District 3, the officers set off to deliver them, ready to challenge negative attitudes children might have of police in Milwaukee. We're trying to make sure that we paint ourselves in a different light, show that uh, we're human, we're just like you, um, and it starts with the kids. Three hoops were raffled off, and Retija Goldpepper drew her cousin Tyree's name for the first hoop. Today, she said she was proud to see police get involved in this way. That just showed that they genuinely cared. And Tyree, who installed the basketball net himself, is happy too, as he sneaks a chance to test his skills with his new hoop. Go ahead, another. I ain't going for that, It just feels good to have a court, you know, to just like wake up, you know, go outside every day. And just practice 
my dribbling, my shooting and all that. New hoops backed by heartfelt intention. Reporting in Milwaukee, Ryan Jenkins, TMJ4 News. <laughs> Hey, I think we see some talent out there for more inspiring stories of people doing good in our city. We have a full half hour of Feel Good TV. Join me every Sunday for Positively Milwaukee. It starts at 9 a.m. Tonight's We're Open takes us to St. Francis. Rod Burks reports from La Finca Coffee House. La Finca Coffee House on Packard Avenue in St. Francis is open for business, but they're not doing dining just yet to protect their mom who works there every day. Our number one factor was our mother. Um, her defenses aren't the best, so it was just a, a group decision that we took so that we could prioritize social distancing, distancing and keep her safe. So with no seating inside, they're doing drive through and carry out. They say social media has been big for them during this pandemic. It has been our number one uh, way of really reaching out to our community and our um, our members. Um, they share uh, pictures online. They share photos of their drinks, whether they're eating at a park or just taking it home. And they have great specialty drinks here. The coffee beans that they use come from outside the United States. So our coffee beans come from our grandfather's farm in Oaxaca, Mexico. The farm's been in our family for five generations, and we always kind of knew where we came from, but we never really, uh, we don't have experience within the coffee field. So my sister and I decided to open up the shop. It'll be three years in October. So our most popular drink is our Mexican mocha, uh, chocolate abuelita with espresso, uh, milk, cinnamon, and a little bit of cayenne pepper. You can have it iced or hot. So we offer like burritos, quesadillas. La Finca Coffee House is open up from seven to two, Monday through Friday. They open up eight to three on the weekends. And the recommendations here are the Mexican mocha and the breakfast burrito. Here in St. Francis, I'm Rod Burks for TMJ4 News. Sounds great, Rod. Thank you. A lot of local businesses to try and support during the pandemic. Go to tmj4.com slash open to find one near you. Still ahead, play ball. Fans had a unique seat for the Brewers scrimmage today. Plus, are you worried about getting taken advantage of on an auto repair? The Call for Action office has tips that can save you some hassle. And it's been another warm and humid day for us here. Current heat index values anywhere from 89 to 99 degrees. It's going to continue to feel warm as we head into this evening. Chance for rain as we finish out the day remains very low, but we see those rain chances going up. We're looking at rain and thunderstorms in the forecast for Thursday. We'll show it to you with future forecasts coming up on the other side of the break. Ahead for us, the CDC drafting new recommendations on reopening schools, what learning could look like for many students in the fall. Also, the big shoe waiting to drop in the airline industry. United's dire layoff warning when we see you back here tonight. If your vehicle needs service, there are a few things you might want to do to ensure you're getting good and honest advice. Karen Stiles of our Call for Action office has helpful tips. Taking a car in for service can be very intimidating, frustrating, and costly. But if you do your homework, you can save a lot of money and have a great experience. Here are a few things that you might want to do. Read your owner's manual. This can help to troubleshoot a problem as well as give you some information on how to maintain your vehicle. You may even learn that there are some repairs and maintenance that you can do yourself. Shop around, ask for referrals, and check out the reputation of repair facilities with consumer resources like the Better Business Bureau. Check to see if the mechanics are ASE certified and if the shop is accredited and approved by BBB or motor clubs like AAA. This could mean that the mechanics have gone through extra training and that the shop follows good business practices. Complete a service order before work is done, specifying the type of problem or service that you are requesting and telling the shop to contact you before expensive work is performed. If you are alerted to an expensive repair or you do not understand why a repair needs to be done, ask questions and seek a second opinion. Most shops do a good job of providing great service at a fair price, but if you run into a problem that you are not able to resolve with the shop, contact consumer resources like the Better Business Bureau or our Call for Action office for help. For TMJ4 News, call for action. I'm Karen Stiles. 
Thank you, Karen. And if you are running into a consumer problem and you don't know where to go for help, our Call for Action office is ready to help you. You can contact them using the information you see right there on your screen. Check this out. The Superior Crane Company in Waukesha loading up this nearly 133-foot, more than 400,000-pound crane today. It's heading to a steel mill in Arkansas. Sped that video up a little bit right there, as you can see all of it at once. Every person on the company's 100-member team has worked on this crane. Truckers will now transport the beast through more than 80 turns between Wisconsin and its new home in Arkansas. And they will take those turns, Carol, very carefully. <laughs> yeah, very gingerly. <laughs>